Aloha, thank you for watching. I planned to do a channeling um, this past weekend, but I've been a bit sick. Nothing serious, just a very sore throat. And I feel slightly better <laughs> today. Um, so I even feel like I need to channel. I like many other occasions I do not know exactly who's going to come through. Uh, there is usually a group, uh, some people around. Um, so let's see. I'm sorry if my voice sounds funny. At least I can swallow and talk <clears throat> right now. Some serious releasing <laughs> during these Scorpio times. <sighs> So there is someone asking for permission and uh, it's not, it's none of none of the people I thought that would come through. Um, can I can I talk a bit about you first? Okay, so. Um, I have shared in other videos that um, I, I, when I was when I was a little girl, I felt very close to all Hollywood actors. I watch maybe too much movies <laughs> in black and white, and and I want to be an actress like like Greta, Marilyn. Betty Davis, uh, Catherine Hepburn, they were my idols. And for me, they were family. They were like aunts. And then they had my aunt, my uncles, like James Stewart, um, Spencer Tracy. Um, I love, oh, I love so many. And I, I really wish I, I could. I can have the chance to channel some of them someday. Um, but I was I was a bit older uh, when I get to watch uh, Marlon Brandon movies. Of course, I was amazed, and um, yeah, I could you you can really see why. It said that he changed acting. Um, he's just something else. And when I when I start channeling, sometimes I would feel him around, but I was a bit. Um, I'm sorry, I have some birds. <laughs> I was a bit, <clears throat> how do you say, intimidated? I don't think you can blame me. Blame me. I mean, he is. He's an intimidating character. Um, so I kind of uh, would push him away. Um, until one one day I was struggling with something and he pop up in my kitchen. I tend to I tend to do a lot of spirit combos, spirit conversations uh, in the kitchen and I channel I spontaneously channel them there. Um, 
and and he g gave me some piece of advice and he was very strong about it he was like listen to me <laughs> you know so many birds <laughs> um, it's a, a flock of seagulls yeah the song immediately <laughs> Uh, start playing in my head. Um, I, yeah, he was very strong about it and made me very emotional. And I, I realized then that there was there was nothing really to be intimidated about. Um, he's just very straightforward. Um, and I watch. Uh, the documentary um, listen to me Marlon it's um, you can hear some of the tapes that Brando recorded um, talking about his life his struggles and so um, And I think it gave me more questions than, than answers. Um, he's a very complex man. Um, I remember I, I have only seen him once in a dream. Usually I see my spirit guides in dreams a lot. Like I have many, many dreams about, about them. And Marlon just once, and it was it was funny because I was I was living a building I was living my childhood home. <clears throat> I, I tend to to see a lot of spirits there. I was living my childhood home, and he was arriving, and I was and I was like, hey, hi, Marlon, and he was like. <laughs> he is not amused <laughs> and I was like what? okay I thought it was really funny um, so yeah you, I, I don't usually know what to expect from him he's not around much but when he comes forward it's like there's nothing else. He demands your complete attention. And, and it's not just an ego thing. Um, like, oh, listen to me. It's because his message is very, very on point. Yeah. And now I'm a bit worried about <laughs> what kind of thing, message he wants to share. Okay. So thank you, Marlon, for coming through. Do not expect me to be the Marlon you think I am. Let me be myself. Can someone please let me be? And it's not only about me. I'm t placing myself as an example. Can you let yourself be? And you let yourself be outside the ideas you have of who you are and what you want and what are you doing. My work doesn't define me. 
There is obviously a lot of me in my work, in my characters, the roles I play in life. But that's just a tiny, tiny aspect of it. I was a force and then no more. I melt, I diluted myself. Sometimes I think I can grasp it. Oh, this is, this is, this is it. It's almost like I can put myself in the hand and say, this is Marlon. But every time, it's just a mirage. And I lose myself in the questions. You're meant to lose yourself over and over. Because the only way to find you again. It's an old game. And we like to play it. Even when there is suffering. Even when it left leaves this bitter, bitter taste in your mouth. It is life. You can live it. You can. You can live it without death. There's no day in your life when death is not hanging side by side with you. If you don't see it, you're stupid. And I think that's the main gift of this reality. Now you cannot put aside the fact that everything can turn into nothing in just a split of a second. It is the meaningless of every action. The very thing that makes everything meaningful. People say the great actor, oh he changed acting. Will I be remembered in a hundred years? Five hundred years? Mm. Let me have my doubts about that. Maybe in some spacecraft, someone is going to watch the men and will think that they know what is to be a man. But you can't. I think Randall itself will dissolve into nothingness once again and that's a good thing forget me forgive me there is a reason why those words are so alike I don't think you can truly forgive unless you forget If you still carry that memory with you, wouldn't it keep spiraling you back into the same issue, the same hurt? Can you believe I still haven't made amends with my father?
It makes me laugh. You come to a point where you think it will never be done. And it's because in that very little connection we have. And I'm not saying it's because it's meaningless, but because compared to everything else, what it is, a grain of sand. But in it, it carries the memories of so many fathers and sons. Almost like if one grain of sun carries all the others within. So what else can you do but turning into a guide that shares, advises about childhood trauma, relationships? How do I dare? The same way I dared to act and become someone else. And change the tone of my voice, change my shape, change my beliefs. Are we going, are we actually going somewhere or are we just turning our heads over and over in this eternal cycle it keeps repeating itself and we really know ourselves or is this a thousand reflections mirroring each other and we cannot know which one is the real? The real me, the real you. Are we different? Or are we just the same note, play it in the same instrument, only heard in different moments I wonder the spirits wonder too you should never take any kind of advice by heart It's like a blind man guiding another. There are certain things some see better than others. I can grasp a certain beauty on this horrific life that might turn into a guiding light to others. Love. That delicious creature I don't think I ever really loved. I certainly long for the feeling. I loved the seduction, the 
falling in love more than love itself. Is this because I haven't fully accepted myself? How can I if I don't know what I am exactly accepting? It's a paradox, isn't it? Or is it that love has no reasons and no logic? Are we called to love without knowing what are we loving exactly? Are we called to fall in love with everything, every detail? Even the ugliness, even the rubbish we want to hide behind the carpet. Mm. I'm still not much in love with humanity. But I have a sort of spot for it. I dwell into the depths of what it is to be a man. What it is to be a lover, a fighter. Everybody is an actor. In this stage, call it Earth. What role are you playing? Are you leading or just supporting? It doesn't really matter, I think. Even the smallest role is necessary. And it has to be a bit of everything, a bit of comedy, a bit of tragedy, a bit of romance, a bit of thriller. Am I rumbling? Most certainly I am. I was not the kind of man I could focus on a single thing. Everything is spread into a multitude of thoughts and memories and feelings. How do you call it now? There must be a diagnosis for it. You love that. All humans and diagnosis. Do you call me narcissistic? Could Randall be bipolar? Does it help? Mm. 
Labels never, never did a thing for me. What does a thing is acceptance? What does a thing is having the space to share your most awful thoughts, your most uh, defining moment, the ones most people want to forget. And still be loved. Can you do that with the ones closer to you? Do you offer them that kind of space? Would you run away when the moment comes? When they really open their hearts and minds and it's not all pitches and cream? Will you stay? Will you stay when those thoughts and feelings arise for yourself? Or do you run to your phone, to the refrigerator? I know that one. Even now, it's not easy to stay. <clears throat> I can still abuse of food and sex in a spirit. So yeah, suicide doesn't help anybody. So what does it help, Brando? I don't think you're being very helpful here. Here, I don't think this has been a very uplifting message. Can you do? Can you do something about it? Can you act like a fucking guide? Well, I can act. Certainly, I can. But do you want me to do that? What does it help? You welcome those thoughts, your darkest moments, your awful actions. You stay with them. You don't look for the redemption. You stay with them. You look at them, you remember them. You write about them, you talk about them, you share about them. And at one point, they will choose to go. It's something I learned. It's you don't choose a thing. Free will? What a big lie. There's no free will in this world. 
But there is one thing. And it's not fun. It's called responsibility. I didn't like it. Who likes that? You want to be a kid. You want to play, you want to have fun. You want to do whatever you want and not deal with the consequences. But the sooner you accept it, the better. This is being too long. You know, I can talk and talk. Eventually, any memory of myself will go, will disappear. And what will stay? What will stay? Is that an open question? <clears throat> I thought he was going to say something else. Oh my god. All the time he was talking, I was like, <laughs> What is this? <laughs> what is this? I'm trying to listen. <clears throat> I don't know if he wants to keep sharing or just me translating. He was talking about Tahiti. So he was giving me the image of Tahiti. Like his essence stays there, his true self, one of the few places where he could be himself, where he actually loved, where he dared to open himself and be loved. He says, the movies will long be long gone, but part of me stays in the trees, the hills. The water. <clears throat> I could feel a lot of uh, of guilt and I remember I always remember someone saying that guilt was anger you you feel you have no right to feel and I and I think there is a lot of that 
when it comes to Brando. And it was kind of a, a big source for his acting, that rage, that represent, contained rage he carried. And that was sort of a motor, but at the end it kind of destroyed him. I'm not sure how to will react <laughs> to this video because it's not what I guess it's not what you expect from a spirit like others guys I channel they, they tend to be it seems like they have everything figured out or most of it well I feel on Rando Marlon he's not interested or um, appearing like a guide Or like someone that has resolved anything. <laughs> and I think that's what he wanted to share. <clears throat> you can be messy. And you can feel guilt and shame. And you can still... It's still worthy your experience. Even when you feel like you're failing in your healing, that you're failing in your um, in your spiritual journey, uh, it's not like that. I think that that that's what he was trying to convey. That you can have no answers, you can have only questions. You can have. No certainty and only doubts. And it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You can still be dealing with trauma from your childhood and even other lives. And it doesn't mean you are missing something or there is something that you should be doing that you're not. You will never arrive to that moment of uh, nirvana or enlightenment because that's that's not what this journey is about. And I think he really encourages for connection to nature. I think that when he was surrounded by nature, it's when he he could really hear himself. And it's sometimes overwhelming or was overwhelming for him. I also feel that uh, he, he carried so much burden because he was not carrying his own, not even from his lineage, from his karmic lineage. But you know how, how he represents a generation? Like this rebellious generation, this trouble, young generation um, that was uh, challenging the notions of, of family, of parenting, um, of civil rights. It, it was uh, 
it was like the rising of this new way of uh, challenging the the system, so to speak. Um, He became a sort of archetype, and and when you become an archetype, when you're incarnated, I think you kind of you tend to uh, to entangle with all of those that see you, that look at you, the that admire you. that look at you for for inspiration. So I think he was channeling this collective struggle, this collective fears about where we were going as a society in the last century, I mean in the previous century. And his his image his icon is still very much alive because those kind of struggles they are still lingering now for the new generations now so I think that maybe it's one of the reasons why Um, there is this identity issues because there was so much that wasn't exactly his stuff. He was just acting as a channel for this for this collective group. And I suspect it happens a lot for the wild ones because they they become these icons beyond their personalities. They become archetypes for for groups of people that turn to them for answers or for guidance or for inspiration. I don't know if he has anything else to share. He's saying something like, love will drive you crazy. If you're not crazy, you're not really loving. If you don't feel in the edge of the seat, it's not really love. There's no comfort in love. There's no way to avoid it. There's no way to escape from it. And you cannot clinch only to love alone. There must be, you must cultivate wisdom in any way or another. And you must integrate, understand your power. Love without power is a thing for fools. Love without wisdom will assure you a quick death. So when you commit with one, you must commit with all.
So I think that's all. I'm kind of tired now. Uh, I'm really curious about your comments. What do you think really Brando was talking about? <laughs> Um, so thank you for for staying. Thank you for watching. I look forward for your comments. Um, see you soon. I wish you a great. Uh, wish you're having a great November. These uh, Scorpio energies are oh, oh, like a tsunami. That is interesting. Oh, I wish you peace beyond all understanding. <laughs>